All right, I've got a ton of network cable here draped around me, maybe 800 feet. I'm just gonna start wrapping this around our building and we will see how far we get. Running a ton of cables for your video surveillance system can be a real pain, but you know what's less of a pain? Running only one cable for each security camera. Hi there, it's Tyler from Nelly Security, and in today's video, we're going to be talking all about power over ethernet, or PoE. What is PoE? What are its limitations, and how can we get past those limitations to run super long cable runs? We're going to be talking about all of that and more in today's video. This is an IP camera. In order for this camera to work, it really only needs one thing, power. And here I have a 12 volt DC power supply. When I plug this camera into the power supply, it is now fully functional. As you can see, the IR lights turn on, this camera is booting up, and it's ready to go. We only have one problem. There's no way to communicate with this camera or to view its video feeds. For that, we need to get this camera set up on our local network. Here I have a Cat5e ethernet cable. I have this connected to just a standard switch, which is connected to our network, and I'm going to plug this into uh, the camera. Now running two cables for one security camera honestly isn't that bad. But what about when you have four cameras, or eight cameras, or 48 cameras? As you add cameras to your video surveillance system, you're also adding cost. If you power your cameras like this, once you have 48 cameras, that's 96 cables that you're going to have to invest in. Not only all the money to purchase all those cables, but all the time it's going to take to lay 96 different cables. But come on, we're not in the 20th century anymore. This is 2020. Sure, we might be in the midst of a global pandemic, a crashing economy, incredibly divisive political climate, but the good news is we have power over ethernet. There is no reason why you should still be running two whole cables to connect one IP security camera. I can actually completely ditch this 12 volt DC connection because this ethernet cable has everything inside of it that it needs to carry both network connectivity and power to my camera. But for that to happen, I can't connect this cable to just any standard switch or router. It has to be a power over ethernet or PoE switch. Throughout the rest of this video, we're going to talk all about power over ethernet. But first, let me introduce you to our PoE products here at Nelly's Security. For PoE products, we only carry one brand because really, it's the only brand we need. IP Cam Power. As the name suggests, IP Cam Power products were designed for one purpose and one purpose only, to power IP cams. This is actually pretty unique in the networking industry because these business class PoE switches are designed from the ground up and optimized specifically for IP security cameras. IP Cam Power has several different products that we're going to be looking at today. We have PoE injectors, full PoE switches ranging from four port all the way up to 48 port, and we also have PoE extenders here. But first, before we jump into these products, let me show you how Power Over Ethernet works. So how does Power Over Ethernet even work? Well, let's use one of these simple injectors as an example. You can see that we have two ports down here at the bottom for your RJ45 Ethernet connection, and we have the wall plug here at the top. These ports are labeled data in and data and power out. And it really is that simple. All you need to do here is take an ethernet cable. You will connect the data in into the injector. And the other end of that cable, you need to plug into just your standard router or internet switch. Then take a second ethernet cable, plug it into the power and data out port, and you will plug the other end of this ethernet cable into your security camera. And that's really all you need to do. Once you connect this injector into the wall, it's going to provide data connection from your network, and it's going to provide power from the injector. And with this one cable, you have both power and data running to your security camera. I hope you can see how much easier this is gonna make your life if you're installing a bunch of security cameras, having to run only that one cable to each camera to connect it both to power and to your network. 
These switches here that range from four ports to 48 ports are the same concept that we just looked at. The difference is this is just an injector that adds PoE to your standard router or switch. Whereas this is a full switch that just happens to have a PoE injector built into it. The concept is the same. You will connect this to your network. You will connect this to your security camera and boom, that's really all you need to do. So let me show you how PoE actually works. And the secret is here inside the cable. You can see inside this ethernet cable, we have all these pairs of twisted wires. These are called twisted pairs, creative, I know. Well, we have four of these, eight cables total. For our purposes here, PoE is going to take two of these twisted pairs and use that to transmit power. And it's going to take the other two twisted pairs and use that to transmit data. This is true for the two PoE standards, which are important to us in video surveillance. That is IEEE 802.3 AF and 802.3 AT. It's all thanks to the construction of this ethernet cable that allows us to use these twisted pairs for various purposes and end up using only one cable for multiple applications. Now let's go ahead and take a closer look at these IP cam power switches. All right, for this video, we are gonna jump in and take a look at this eight port switch. Now I know what you're saying. Wait a minute, Tyler, that switch has 10 ports on it. Why are you calling that an eight port PoE switch? That's a great question and a valid point. This is a 10 port switch in total, but only eight of these ports actually have PoE capabilities. These two ports on the end are actually just standard uplink ports, which you'll use to connect this to other network devices, such as your router, another standard switch, another PoE switch, or even your NVR. These eight ports are all fully PoE rated and can produce power at an 802.3 AF or AT standard. The difference between 802.3 AF and 802.3 AT has to do with the amount of power that can be outputted. 802.3 AF is just standard PoE. It can produce up to 15 watts of power. 802.3 AT is what's known as PoE Plus, which can produce up to 30 watts of power, twice as much as standard PoE. So that means depending on what device you plug into these ports, it can produce up to 15 or even up to 30 watts of power. The total budget for this entire system is 130 watts of power. If you're following along and doing the math, you realize that if eight ports can produce 30 watts of power, then the overall total power budget of this entire system should be 240 watts. But the thing is, you are not going to need all 30 watts on each of these ports. Actually, it's pretty rare if you're going to need 30 watts for even one of these ports. A simple security camera like this only consumes five to six watts max of power. Even this giant PTZ we have installed outside goes up to 15 or 16 watts of power. And there are some bigger cameras that do consume 20 watts of power and even up to 30. But again, you're not going to be composing an entire video surveillance system of these giant power hungry cameras. 130 watts of power is plenty to get our entire video surveillance system up and running with this eight port system. So if you already have your surveillance system or if you're planning on purchasing one, be sure to check out the specs of your cameras just to see what kind of power consumption we're working with. You can do the math and figure out if your system can be supported by one of these switches. It probably can. Now let's talk about some of the limitations of PoE and more specifically, how to overcome those limitations. Actually, instead of talking about it, let me just show you. All right, I've got a ton of network cable here draped around me. I'm not quite sure how much, maybe 800 feet. I'm just gonna start wrapping this around our building and we will see how far we get. So we have network data traveling here along these twisted pairs within this ethernet cable. Due to resistance, that data can only travel so far, actually just a little over 300 feet. So with just a PoE switch and an ethernet cable, you won't be able to lay cable runs longer than that. But there are a couple of ways that IP cam power helps you get around those limitations. And the first one is integrated right into the switch that we've been looking at. Whew, that was exhausting. 
All right, I've got that ethernet cable laid. It's pretty long, longer than 600 feet. And now we are going to plug it into our PoE switch and see what happens. We've got this eight port switch that we've been looking at and you can see that we do have it connected to power and to the network. We have the green light for power, the yellow flashing light for network connectivity. And do you hear that? This thing is completely silent. There's no fan or anything in there. The only way you can even tell that it's on is because of those lights. So there is one end of our ethernet cable and here is the other end. I've got this bullet camera that we were looking at earlier, so let's go ahead and plug this in. All right, you can see there that we do have infrared lights coming on. I don't know if you can tell. So we definitely have power running to this camera from the ethernet cable. Now I'm gonna hop on the computer. We're gonna open up Easy Tools and check out if this thing is showing up on our network. And you can see here that it is definitely not showing up on our network. But you'll notice that I still haven't talked about this tiny little switch on this switch. Well, this tiny little switch on this switch switches the switch's capabilities from standard to extended. Essentially, this extend mode allows you to lay cable runs up to 800 feet in length, more than twice the length of a standard PoE cable run. So now I'm gonna try that again, but this time I'm going to flip this switch into extended mode. All right, plugged it in. We've got power because we can tell that the IR lights are turning on. And now if we check this out on the computer, it is showing up on our network. So we have successfully set up this camera using only PoE at about 600 feet. And again, this extended mode can reach up to about 800 feet. Now I know what you're thinking. What is this, some kind of black magic? And well, the answer is, yeah, pretty much. But in the words of Rumpelstiltskin, All magic comes with a price. All magic does indeed come with a price, and the price of this magic? Network speeds. While this is in standard mode, all eight ports are capable of carrying data at a speed of up to 100 megabytes per second. When you turn on extended mode, you can get much longer distances out of your cable runs, but your max speed drops from 100 megabytes per second to 10 megabytes per second. Now that may sound like a drastic drop in speed, and for the most part, it really is, but for video surveillance, you're actually not going to notice it that much. If you refer to our help guides for setting your camera's video settings, you'll see that even for 4K Ultra HD 8 megapixel video, our recommended bitrate is just a little bit over 8 megabytes per second. So unless you have just a ton of 12 megapixel cameras connected to this, or maybe you have a computer connected to this port communicating with your cameras, you're really not gonna see any issues with this speed drop. So when it's just for video surveillance, when you just have your eight megapixel or below security cameras connected to this port, go ahead and flip on that extended mode if you need it. When it comes to that speed drop, you're most likely going to notice little to no impact on your system. I do wanna point out that not all of our IP cam power switches have this extend mode, only two of our models do. We have an eight port and a 24 port that either comes with the extended mode or without the extended mode. If you opt for the 24 port with extend mode, keep in mind that only eight ports are actually capable of being extended. Ports one through 16 are actually just standard PoE ports that are capable of pushing data at speeds of up to 100 megabytes per second at distances of about 300 feet. So what if you wanna take your cable runs longer than 300 feet, but you don't have one of these switches that come with the extend mode? Well, you're not out of luck just yet. We do have another product that can help you out, and that is these PoE extenders. Now these two products are essentially the same. The difference is this bigger one is gigabyte rated, so it can handle a little bit faster speeds. But again, when we're working with standard PoE and PoE+, we're really not gonna be using speeds faster than 100 megabytes per second. So for our purposes here, both of these are essentially the same. So like the name suggests, these basically just extend your PoE range. It takes a PoE input and it outputs that in two different ports. So not only is this an extender, it's also a splitter. You can run just one cable to this and have two outputs to connect to two different cameras, which is super helpful. But the main purpose of this is to extend your PoE coverage. Again, the typical PoE range is about 300 feet, a little more than that. You can actually take this and place this about 300 feet out, connect your PoE input to this, and then you will have 300 more feet to work with. Uh, which is pretty crazy. You can actually daisy chain these up to two. So 300 feet, put one of these, 300 feet, put one of these, and then you can have an additional 300 feet up to 900 feet or more of PoE, 
which is really awesome. These don't take an external power supply. The only power it gets is from the PoE input. So you don't have to deal with connecting this to power at the installation site. So these products are super handy and they're actually pretty cheap. So whether or not you have a PoE switch that handles extend mode, you can pick up one or two of these, extend your PoE distance even further, and even split that PoE output at your installation site and install two cameras with one cable run back to your PoE switch. That's pretty incredible. I will point out that this can take an input of 802.3 AF or 802.3 AT, which is PoE or PoE plus, but it only outputs 802.3 AF, which is standard PoE at about 15 watts. So even if you are outputting 30 watts at the initial PoE site, you will only be able to output 15 watts using this extender and splitter. What that means is you may not be able to power some of the larger cameras like certain PTZs, but for all your standard fixed and motorized lens cameras, you should be pretty well off with that 15 watts coming out of this extender. So there you go. There's a couple of ways for you to get around those length requirements, uh, a couple of ways for you to run some lengthy cable runs if you need to and still use PoE without making it more difficult on yourself than it really needs to be. There is one other way to get longer PoE cable runs using Ubiquiti, but that's a topic for another video. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up with two questions. Question number one, should I be using PoE? Absolutely no question about it. There's no reason why in 2020 you should be running two cable runs to your IP security cameras. Using PoE is just such an easy way to get connected and it's relatively cheap. So yes, you should be using PoE. The next question is, should I be using IP cam power products? Definitely check out some of these switches. Again, we have four port switches all the way up to 48 port switches. This is the brand that we use here at Nelly Security. We have a ton of these around. This is how we power our own security cameras. We definitely recommend checking these out. With those two uplink ports, you can connect these together and build a huge system of security cameras and power them all from these switches. You can check out all of these products on our website. I will leave links in the description below. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. We are always here to help you, so give us a call, send us an email. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful for you. I hope you learned something. I know I learned a few things preparing for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to follow us across social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, subscribe to our email newsletter so you never miss another video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.